Hey guys, this is Doug. And this is Pat. Welcome back. So we really appreciate the comments we're getting on the other uh, stuff we've done about um, uh, Summer's Les Paul's guitars with humbucking pickups on them. That was pretty fun and Les Paul specials. Today, we're going to be doing one of our favorites. We've been playing these forever and that's going to be the Les Paul Jr. Two versions of this guitar, the single cutaway again. This guy is a 55. 55. It's a 55. And then they have the latter 50s, early 60s version where they went to the double cutaway, just like the specials. Single pickup, two controls on it. Solid, simple rig. Solid rig. Really, mahogany. really simple rig. You know, an interesting thing about these, uh, these guitars is that, you know, there's a lot of guys, a lot of. Uh, pro guys and working man guys who, who use these guitars. They're almost like sort of like a working man's guitar. You know, you think with just one pickup on it that it would be limiting, but you know, for me when I heard Leslie West play one, you know, it's like, man, what was up with that? And of course now we've got Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day and who are some other players? Mick Jones from The Clash played him. Mm -hmm. I saw a video with Keith Urban, a couple of live things with Keith Urban. Killer tones, killer tone. So anyway, we're going to be taking these juniors and we're going to be running them back through the uh, directly plugged into the Vox AC10 head. The cabinet has two 12-inch uh, Celestian G12s, a la 1965, like what we did before. And we're going to compare new ones, reissues, with the old guys and uh, and hear what they sound like. So, uh, speaking about uh, Les Paul Jr.'s as being a working man's guitar, we've got a guest with us today, a local um, singer-guitar player named John Kuntz. You see John back here on our geezer poster, we play some gigs with him. And John plays, among a couple other things, he plays a Les Paul Jr. and he's brought his uh, Fender uh, Princeton Reverb amp and a super vintage Echoplex, and we're going to hear that for a second before we go and compare the new ones to the old ones. So, we'll be right back. Okay, I'm here with local musician John Kuntz. John's had a couple uh, big label records, and uh, he's a musician around town. He's probably, without a doubt, the best rock singer in the city of Portland here. And, and he is gigging with a Les Paul Jr. What can you tell us about this Jr., John? Uh, this is a reissue. Historic. It's from the Historic Custom Shop. Uh, it's not a, you know, like just one of your inexpensive reissues. One of the many that you see no, online. No, this, this is one that I think it list, uh, it, at that time, when it was new in 05, I think it listed for like just under 3300 bucks. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not an Epiphone. No. It's not no, your, this yeah. Because there's uh, so much confusion about what this is. This is the right. historic series. It comes with a little funny, suitable for framing certificate, the whole bit. Super. So I'm going to play this guitar later through the Vox and compare it to a 55, but right now I just want you guys to hear John's uh, guitar run through his Fender amp and through the echo plaque. So, why don't you give us a little something yeah. back? But they hear. Yeah. Okay, let's compare some single cutaway juniors. We got a couple of them here. The one you just heard is John's, is this one. And this is a 55. 55's. Obviously got some color happening there, probably maybe from <laughs> from laying smoke lying on top of your car. That's right. That's, right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Definitely Smoky not. Bar we don't recommend that it. at all. So we're going to run this through the uh, through the very noisy box amp that we have here. <laughs> guys get that, but that's real balls. The frets on this guitar are the uh, 55 frets, and they're pretty small like what we've seen in some of the other ones. So for me, this guitar is a little bit hard to get around on as far as playing vibratos getting underneath the string like that. Let's see what it sounds like. The uh, 
historic reissue. <laughs> Beautiful red finish. We're going to compare it to the reissue historic series. Yes. TV model. This actually says TV model on the headstock right there. So can't argue about that. Beautiful finish on this. Very similar to that uh, blonde special. It had that TV finish on it. And that's an 07. That's an 07. Yep. This guitar, because it is a late 59, has the larger frets as we've said before. So we'll see how that works out. Neck profile on it is not real skinny, so it's still got that 59 thing happening to it. It's not real big and bulky. It's just actually very, very, very cozy neck. Feels really good to me. Let's hear what it sounds like. To it. You can actually hear the amplifier kind of going into a compression where we haven't really heard it that much before. Mm -hmm. So you hear the note and it goes, and then it sort of comes on like this, sort of like this. <laughs> It's really kind of going through a little bit of a beating there. Very, very ballsy sounding guitar. We backed off a little bit. It sounds a little bit, uh, it's kind of greasy. It's a historic reissue, yes. Historic reissue guy. This has a, a serial number that starts with an 8, so going for that obviously late 58 thing. This has a really big neck on it. Bigger. This is the largest neck of any of the guitars we've played. The frets really look like the frets that are on the uh, late 59. Yeah. They're a little wider like that, so it looks really pretty much like the, like the real guy on there. So 
obviously we're playing this guitar really ballsy because why would you have a guitar like this if you didn't play it like that? <laughs> so I think this guitar sounds really good too. What do you little, think? I think it's a little brighter than the 58 uh, or the 59, but it's probably because it's yellow. Oh, again, is, is all the yellow ones are bright like that? Well, yeah. Is it a guarantee from Gibson, or is this a personal guarantee? That's what they that? told me when I talked to uh, Orville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Billy Gibbons. <laughs> yeah, where's where's the Billy Gibbons pipe? We haven't seen that. I don't know. I think somebody might have taken it, put it on eBay. Yeah. So we just got through listening to some of those juniors there, and you know, I tell you, consistently to me, I got to say this. These juniors, are, all of them, the old ones and the new ones, are ballsier than the specials that we did last time. It, but why is that? Why it doesn't is make that? sense. Why is that? They have P90 pickups on them, so the, they both do. The special has two of them. And it just kind of makes you wonder, did Gibson make an overwhelmed P90 for the junior and just didn't say anything about it? What, what, or, what could it be? Or is it just the way it's mounted into the body? You know, the pickup, like I say, sitting on top as opposed to mounted down inside the body. Yeah, it's screwed in like that. Screwed in like that because it's so audible, such a huge difference. Well, we took the impedance reading on a couple of guitars and let's grab them right here. We also brought them in in the same finish. This is the uh, Les Ball Special and it's a 57, and this is a TV model and it's a 57. It's 57 also. All right. And so. We have compared these guitars, we're going to strum them one more time. The reading on the pickup of this guitar on, on the junior is uh, 8.13, and the reading on this one is 7.34. Well, that could account for some of it, but the pickup up here on this special is 8.9. Really huge difference right there. So, does, does Gibson make this on purpose? Did they, did they wind these pickups like this I on does. purpose? I, they, I, I think they probably just had all these pickups in a big old box, started mm -hmm. picking them out and throwing them on guitars. Mm -hmm. so. We'd be interested to see what you guys think about that. I'm, I'm going to strum these one last time and we're going to hear to make sure that, as you were implying, that Orville Gibson told you, it's the color of the guitar. It's the finish. The yellow ones are brighter than the red ones. That's all there is to it. There it's it ball. is. Special. Is it ballsier or less ballsy than the Les Ball Junior? Just going to strum some stuff on it all the way up through the box. <laughs> TV model. Oof. Talk amongst yourselves. It's Doug. This is Pat. It makes me want to dance. That's right. See you next time. <laughs>